Today, we're checking out the new Paul Reed Smith S2 594. So as you guys know, this is a new guitar that just came out. This is the box, <laughs> very cool. Uh, what's great is I don't have to cut it. There's no tape, it's just stapled shut. So here we have the gig bag. That's what's coming with this S2 model. It's got the signature on it. It's the older signature. The new signature, you can read it. You can actually say where it says read and stuff. So this is the older signature. Um, it's got the main pouch. Let's see what you get inside the pouch. And okay. Hopefully this will be exciting. Uh, you get the uh, truss rod adjustment, a couple Allen wrenches, and an extra screw, the locking screw for the tuning keys. This is a standard pack. Comes with every S2 and core model. You get the uh, the thank you. This is new. I don't never gotten this before. It's a thank you brochure. Factory tours. Uh, talks about the PTC program, which is where you can send your PRS back to PRS and have them fix or update it. Warranty card and registration paperwork. The Paul Reed Smith sticker or PRS sticker. It says both PRS Paul Reed Smith. And then an owner's manual that is pretty thick and it covers, looks like most of the models or if not all the models. Very cool, paperwork. Uh, that's it. Uh, in the bag, you get some spots for some pencils. It looks like you put some picks in there, some smaller compartments. So pretty cool uh, for that. This doesn't look like it, but it's usually big enough for a small uh, book or tablet. There's no top pouch. However, one cool thing is they do have the gel. Um, more paperwork. They do have the gel uh, shoulder straps. One thing I really like about the PRS gig bags, there's a little pouch that some of you guys may not know about. And inside it is a, uh, to hang in your closet. Now you don't hang the guitar in your closet, but you can hang your gig bag in your closet. I mean, you could hang your guitar in your closet. I wouldn't. Wow, look at that. Very light. So uh, that's the first thing I noticed. Very, very light. Um, how light you say, I don't know. Um, I could weigh it, but to be honest with you, I would say seven pounds, between seven pounds and seven pounds, six ounces uh, is my guesstimate. And I bet you I'm pretty darn close. Here are some interesting specifications on the guitar. It is a mahogany body with a maple cap. It's a mahogany neck with 22 frets and 24.594 inches scale length, which is why it's called the 594, basically 24 and a half inches. So shorter scale than a Gibson Les Paul, which would be 24 and three quarters. Uh, it's got a patterned vintage neck, which is, uh, vintage obviously implies that it's a thick neck, which it is, but pattern means it's like carved to be more comfortable to your hand, and I believe that's to be true. The fretboard is rosewood with fake bone binding, and there's a 10 inch radius, which is really common to the PRS guitars. The electronics are the 5815S pickups, so they're supposed to be like the core guitars, but different. I think that's why they've got the 5815S on there, to imply that like, but different. It's got two volume controls, two tone controls that can push, pull, and uh, make the uh, the pickups single coils. So let's continue to check it out. Uh, a couple things. Uh, it comes with tens, string with tens, S2 MC, which is McCarty 594, uh, the serial number. This was made January 27th. Oh, yeah, January 27th of 2020. It's got the 35th anniversary uh, card. It's got a promotion for the strings, and then, of course, the S2. Uh, stands for Stevensville 2 because they're made in Stevensville, Maryland. It's got the uh, the bone colored pickup frames. It's bound. It's got the binding in the neck. Um, a couple choices I thought were strange. Uh, it's got their graph tech or graphite nut. I thought it should have a bone nut. I understand this is the co cut cost model, but it seemed like that was an important piece to keep on the guitar. At least go with the white, uh, you know, kind of ivoryoid uh, looking nut for aesthetics because it does look weird with the binding just stopping and going to the black. So that was a weird choice. The bridge looks fantastic. The pickups and the uh, the binding looks fantastic. The birds are the white plastic. I prefer that. Now, so you know, that was one of the things I liked about the John Mayer was it had the white plastic um, ivory looking birds. I don't know what it is. I just like that better than abalone. I wish that was an option, you know what I mean, on all the more expensive ones. Uh, tuning keys. This is the thing that everybody was... Uh, t t kind of quacking about on the internet was the fact that they didn't put the locking keys on there. It has the uh, Cluson style keys, but non-locking, uh, and they put the brass shafts. I agree. I, I don't understand the logic. They were 
these are not as nice as the S2 normal locking keys, in my opinion. Although again, aesthetically, they're closer to being accurate. But again, it is an S2. This is less than half the price. So the core one is at least 36 without 10 top. This one's about 17. So, I mean, it's considerably a lot less money. I'm gonna see how it came out of the box. They kind of talk about this. First, we'll, we'll strum it and see if it's in tune. No, but it's close to in tune. You know, they, uh, I talked to them. They said they shipped these in tune. So, okay, so we have the action at the 12th fret at one and a half millimeters and the action off the third fret is, I'm gonna say it's 0.75 millimeters to one millimeter. I'm gonna say 0.75. So action uh, is great. Uh, I, I would adjust this only slightly. I'd probably lower it a little bit on the bridge side. That's it to me. So let's check out to see how the guitar sounds. I have my 68 reissue Princeton that I love I'm using my Sennheiser mic and uh, I'm just recording it straight in and let's see what it sounds like. I do have a pedal board on the floor, but right now I'm just running the amp. So we're gonna start with the neck pickup. I wanna give you some uh, quick sound samples. Now, something I wanna point out when I was doing the unboxing is it does have coil splits uh, on it, on the tone controls. So we'll start with humbuckers and we'll go to the single coils. Here we go. tuner off right there. Now, something I wanted to point out uh, is how big the guitar sounds. The neck pickup is huge. It's very reminiscent of the 594 core. Go to the middle position, here we go. What I like is that balances out. Listen, it's like, Little big, boomy. Still get the low note. But now you get the clarity of the bridge pickup. So it blends really well. Bridge pickup. It's all in the mids right there. Now, one thing I will tell you, because I do have a 594 core guitar from PRS, it's got that, uh, you know, the same neck feel, which is that uh, pattern vintage kind of feel. It does feel just chunky like that, but very comfortable. In fact, I've always thought this is the chunkiest neck that still feels comfortable to my hands. Uh, it's got the right radius, the correct radius. The frets feel the same. Everything feels the uh, same. Let's go ahead and we're gonna go back up. Now let's go to the single coils. I'll just switch between them. Here's the bridge. So here's your neck pickup. Big difference right there. So to, with the humbucker, you get the bass. Now split that. So it's got this thing, well, it doesn't feel stratty to me. It just sounds, uh, it sounds more P90-ish. Uh, still big, plumeful, powerful, uh, single coil tones, not the thinner sound sounds. Let's go to the bridge. We'll do the same thing. Here we go. Really like that. To me, add a little delay to that. Let's go ahead, start with something super easy, a Tube Screamer. That's just a Tube Screamer on the bridge pickup. Here we go. Notes are huge. Chords feel great too. It's a little dark, a little dark. I wonder if I can brighten this up. That is what I want a guitar like this to sound like. Let's go 
the neck pickup. Now the neck gets so bassy that I feel like you lose distortion. You actually lose the overdrive a little bit. See, it's kind of different. Uh, so I like the contrast, but be aware of it. That's pretty intense. Uh, I don't remember the core being so dramatically different, those two pickups, um, but very reminiscent. Now I have the Tube Screamer on. Now what I want to do is uh, turn the volume up and I'm gonna hit the fuzz pedal. So fuzz and Tube Screamer. a crazy idea. Here's my crazy idea. So I'm gonna go to the middle position and I'm gonna turn on that Tube Screamer and the fuzz. That was fun. So there's your fuzz pedal. And of course, metal. So I got my LPD 87 pedal here. So my final thoughts on the guitar are, it's overly a very impressive instrument. It sounds and feels exactly like the core model um, and to the point where I don't feel like this is something different, which is really what's important when you're gonna cut a guitar's price in half and still make it in the USA. This is a main USA guitar made in the same facility as the guitar that's more than double the price or double the price. So the point of this is, uh, did how did they fare on that job? How did they do? And I think they did an overall really good job especially for the S2 series. Now keep in mind this guitar is only $100 or $200 more than a normal S2 priced instrument. That's an accolade in itself because you have to understand that the 594 has been a hot seller even at that higher end price for PRS. So the, to obviously make something that everybody's looking for is a great idea. Is it as good as my core? I don't know. I'd have to A-B them. So here's what I'm going to tell you guys. Since the channel got 250,000 subscribers, here's what I will do. If we get 2,500 thumbs up, I will go ahead and release the video of the comparison, comparing this A being it against my core and giving you a detailed video uh, explaining what I feel about each feature side by side to see, do you really need to pay double the price to get something or are you gonna be fine with this model? So on that note, I think I'll let you go. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and checking out the new PRS S2594. And as always, thank you so much for your time and know your gear. <laughs>